Okay, hello everyone. My name is Paul Newton, and uh, welcome to the ZOS Introduction and Workshop. Uh, as Bruce had mentioned earlier, this is actually the very first time we've done this particular class remotely. So there'll be a couple of um, there'll be a couple of sessions today that will be a little bit challenging because I'm going to have everybody access the system this morning, and uh, we will we will do our best to get everybody through that. It'll probably go a little bit slower than I want. So if you can actually see the screen right now, one thing that I want to point out is I want to point out to the right-hand side of the presentation, you actually see the participants, and then you'll see um, the chat line that we have there. And I want you to be able to use that chat line during the session, all four and a half days here. So when you're having some issues, you could try to be uh, brief, but we'll have a number of people to be able to handle those chat lines and also uh, potentially um, for the more complex ones, we may be able to turn over screen sharing to the person that's having a issue so that we can all look at that particular issue as a learning experience. Also, you'll notice that there's a, um, a place where you can raise and lower your hand. And we're probably going to exercise that in a moment here. So I'm going to go on to the next page. Okay, so what we're going to do during this particular course introduction is I'm going to list the prerequisites of the course, and I want you to be able to use that chat line, and then we're going to list the objectives of what we're going to accomplish here. I'm going to talk about the agenda, and then we're going to describe the learning environment that we're in in this course. So essentially, the prerequisites is just that you've got some IT work experience. If you had any previous experience with MVS, OS 390, or ZOS, uh, it'll be a lot easier because we do cover a great amount of information, and even those people with experience, they're able to learn things from the class. However, those that have zero experience with the environment, you will actually be exposed to a great deal of information. So don't try to memorize everything because we're going to be going at a pretty rapid rate over the four and a half days. And one thing that we discovered after doing this class for several years, that some people would say, well, there's too much information in too short a period of time. So what we did is we took a survey on many classes. Did you want us to spread it out or did you want us to cover a little bit less? And overwhelmingly, we found that even though it's a lot of information in a short period of time, a lot of people would actually said, no, we want the maximum amount of information in the least amount of time. So that's what we're doing right now. And you'll find that uh, it is a lot of information. Don't try to memorize. You'll end up with above average familiarity and how to look things up later. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next page. Some of the people on the chat line here, there's some pictures here. Bruce, that you just heard from, is up there. And Bruce has a, um, his distinctive competency is in the CICS area. Uh, but I want you to know that all the people that you see on this list are very good with many different disciplines in the System Z environment. I just happen to list some of the things that they have a distinctive strength in. You'll notice that Ron is the second one. Ron's actually going to be a speaker later in the week. He's going to discuss MQ series. Paul Kruza, who you actually see, is actually going to do a security presentation later in the week. Uh, Vance is in the room with us, and he'll be helping with the chat lines. Jenny will be in here later in the week. John will be helping, and you can see Steve in there. And uh, Larry is in the room with us right now. George will be helping us with DB2 and IMS. And the last picture there is myself, who's the instructor. Okay, what I would like to do to kind of uh, practice a little bit, if anybody on the telephone, uh, actually everyone that's got some information technology experience, why don't you raise your hand, and I'll see all the hands raised. So right now I see two hands raised, four hands and five hands. So I see a lot of hands being raised right now. 
Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and lower the hands. Yeah. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how to handle the um, – okay, let's do some hand raising also. And for those of you that are in the room here, they're IBMers, don't you raise your hand. Only the non-IBMers raise your hand, okay? Okay, the other um, – how many people are aware of – just aware of – the IBM System Z mainframe. I assume that you're aware of it. So how many people are aware? Raise your hand. Okay, very good. So I'm going to lower all the hands. Now, how many people that are uh, non-IBMers have some experience with the IBM System Z mainframe, the mainframe itself? Go ahead and raise your hand if you have some experience. Okay, so we have two people have some experience. That means we have some people that are very, very new to the environment. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the hands. Now, last question to raise your hand. How many people on the phone have some experience with ZOS? Raise your hands. Okay, only two again, which means we have some people that are brand new to ZOS. Now, those that are brand new... I try to make this class for you, but that um, the, the, the class itself is made for the people that have no experience with ZOS. And uh, those of you that have some experience, I'm sure you'll get something out of this four and a half days. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the hands, go on to the next page. So the class, as Bruce said, is uh, four and a half days. There are some optional lab assignments. And those optional lab assignments you can do in the evening, or we're going to leave the system available for up to two weeks and possibly a little bit longer for you to actually get on the system and practice once this class is over. So I want you to be aware of that. Once you get on this system and use it, this system will continue to be available to you. Now, I mentioned earlier the purpose is to give you familiarity of the ZOS environment and focused on the operational administration and application development. So I'm going to go on to the next page. I'm not going to read all this. Everything that you see here, if you're unfamiliar with it, you will be more familiar with it if you attend the various sessions during the 4.5 days. Because for those of you that are brand new, you're looking at some acronyms there that are probably totally foreign to you. And I'm probably going to confirm that when we get into uh, different sections. I'll probably ask you uh, how many people have never heard of what TSO is, and I'll ask you to raise your hand. But anyway, these are, these are many of the things we're going to discuss <clears throat> during the four and a half days. So I'm going to go on to the next page. On this page here, is the agenda, and I basically got that mark time management. You'll notice the first day, it's there in the little bit of a yellowish background. That is what I call the navigation day. And by the end of, by the end of today, you should be able to at least get on the system, navigate a little bit. And that's the whole goal of today, is to give you some comfort with navigating the environment. Then tomorrow is more about the environment. We go a little bit deeper into the, the elements you need to really use the environment. Then on the third day, this is our middleware day. And the, uh, the third day, we're going to be discussing things like DB2, IMS, CICS, Web Sphere Application Server, and other things. Then you'll notice that the very last thing I've got there is management and control. That covers both Thursday and Friday. That's where you get into more of the some systems programming area things and some other um, uh, some other just security you'll notice is in there and other things. And then on Friday we'll actually talk about our hypervisor and the Z Enterprise System Environment, which is a little bit different than just, well, it's a lot different than just ZOS. And then we'll wrap up Friday with any general questions and answers. Now, I will let you know also that after the session is terminated every day, 
which will approximately be 3.30 to 4 on um, Central Time, I will leave the chat line open because I will probably be here in the room working on some things. So if anyone's got any chat questions, that will probably be open for an hour to an hour and a half after the session's over with, and I'll be on. Okay, so now the, the classroom environment, uh, we have a projector in the room here, obviously, and you've got Internet access. We're using something called the Smart Cloud Meeting. So if we have any issues with the Smart Cloud Meeting later on, you can just refer to it as the SCM in the chat line. And by saying SCM, we know we're talking about the media that we're using right here to, to, for your remote access. So that's called Smart Cloud Meeting. You don't have to type that out. Just say SCM. Now, later on today, we're going to be using a TM3270 emulator to connect to the system. We'll be using an FTP client to connect to the system. And we'll try to SSH into the system. If you struggle with this, and we have a, and you have a problem getting on, uh, what we can do is during the lunchtime, I could probably personally work with a couple of people that struggle to get on. I'm hoping everyone will get on. I plan to go slow enough to let everyone get on. Okay, so this is what we've just talked about. We listed the prerequisites of the course. We actually used the chat line. Uh, we listed the objectives, we talked about the agenda, and we described the learning environment. So now I want to introduce uh, Maureen Townsend, and I realize, Maureen, I didn't put your name under your picture. <laughs> and Maureen, Maureen's the manager of the System Z ISV Remote Development Center of Dallas, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about our programs that we have for the independent software vendors. Thanks, Paul. So I'm going to do a raised hand question here to start with. Of those of you on the phone, how many of you work with an independent software vendor or one of the IBM business partners? I'm not sure how many of you might be at clients. Okay, so, so we have a couple of folks. So I'll go through this fairly quickly then since since we don't have too many people who would be using these sorts of services. Um, what, what I wanted to start with is, is talking about the IBM Innovation Centers. So IBM has a number of facilities located around the world, and, and actually the number is 43 as of two weeks ago when we opened our latest center in Nairobi, Kenya. So we have these facilities in, in different geographies to help facilitate our partnerships with independent software vendors and with clients. And the kinds of things that you can do in these innovation centers are, are very collaborative. We have an extensive ecosystem in each of these locations that consists of ISVs, clients, IBMers, and uh, constituents from the academic community as well. And we do a variety of events, education sessions, like the one that you're participating in today. We also do go-to-market kinds of activities and sales events. ISVs can request the ability to use our facilities to bring partners in. Um, we have different technology available in terms of demos and, and um, the facilities at each of the different locations, and we can customize the use of the facilities to the particular business purpose that, that you might have. So if you can move on, Paul. The next thing that we're going to talk about is just to spend a minute on the Innovation Center in Dallas, which is where we're hosting this session from um, this week. And so we have a, a wonderful new facility here where we have uh, quite a large training room where we can bring people in in large groups and conduct edu formal education. We also have a series of smaller rooms. We're in one of those today um, with about a dozen people in, in this class. You are welcome to use these sessions for um, things that you're doing with partners. One of the things that we often see um, happen in these centers is that we may have, for example, a system integrator who wants to bring together a solution around a particular client pain point or, or problem in the market, um, and they'll get together with, with independent software vendors who might be able to provide pieces of that solution, and then they'll together host an event where we bring in clients to help them understand the value of the technology. So. 
In addition, out of Dallas, we run a number of, of global or remote programs where we can support our partners regardless of where they are in the world, what time zone they're in, um, or where their physical location is. Some of those programs are at no charge, and others have fees associated with them, very small fees to help us just recover our costs. So, Pons, we can move on. We'll go into the programs a little bit. Um, so, from a System Z perspective, our, our programs are focused on, on primarily either ZOS or Linux on System Z. And for ZOS, we have two programs. The validation program, the middle bullet, is the one I'm actually going to start with, because that one is a no-charge program that we offer for you to be able to get in and use our um, our systems for up to 60 days to test out Linux on System Z. So we often have have um, partners who say, "How is how is Linux on System Z different?" Well, as you know, the point of Linux is Linux is Linux, and the differences between platforms are minimal. But we give people the opportunity to get in and really get hands-on access to to the technology to be able to see how it works. Um, for many partners, that 60 days is long enough for them to actually do a validation test of their solution on, on our stack. And we offer um, both Red Hat and SUSE Linux flavors. We also have a remote development program for those who need longer-term access. Um, from a mainframe perspective, not all of our partners have the need to, to buy a machine in their own facility. And so we make available shared resources from our facility to help them be able to do a variety of test and development um, projects in order to support their business. For Linux, we also offer a, a no-charge test drive program, which is available for 30 days or 60 days if the solution involves IBM middleware. And again, that's an opportunity to get in and kind of kick the tires and see how things will work. And then we have a more extensive program, next page, um, for those who are coming from a Linux environment try and help move applications from an x86 environment to Linux on System Z, or the Chip Hopper program also supports moving applications to Linux on power systems. And the kinds of things that we do here are we have um, some really great technical skills who are available to provide consultation and expertise in planning and executing the migration and testing of these applications to the System Z platform and we make available the servers um, to be able to do this testing on our systems at no charge. And then when, we're, when, when the testing is complete, um, the offerings under Chip Hopper are registered in what's called the IBM Global Solutions Directory, which helps give you, give you visibility into the marketplace. Okay. We have a couple of other things that some of our business partners would be interested in. Um, the Developer Discount Program is a mechanism available in most countries um, that allows you to get access to discounted prices on um, hardware and software. And the link for how to apply for that particular program is provided. If you have any questions about that, you can go to that website and it will give you the contact information. We also offer a technical advocate program where we have volunteers from the software development labs around the world, ZOS as well as um, some of the middleware products, who say they would be willing to spend a portion of their work week helping out um, one or more of our business partners. And what these folks typically do is they themselves are technical experts in some particular domain, and they are available to answer questions and provide context. And we try to match up an ISV with, with a technical skill who has some knowledge in an area that's relevant for that particular ISV. Um, but, but one of the things that's most important that, that the advocates can do is to help to find the right resource in IBM to answer whatever the given question is that the ISV is facing at a particular point in time. Okay, then um, staying connected, we also offer a fee-based early test program in Dallas um, for access to, to early releases of the OS operating system. So, we actually start working with the ISVs prior to the start of the beta so that the ISVs can have their applications available by the time the beta begins so that the customers can make the most possible progress using the new release before it becomes generally available. We also offer access to new releases of the hardware and often those programs are available at no charge for those who would like to test unannounced hardware and participate in the announcement of those particular products. We do some 
disclosure meetings twice a year. Um, those are held face-to-face in, -face in Poughkeepsie, New York, and we provide a lot of information on on upcoming releases and and things that, you know, kind of think, provide a longer range horizon for planning. We're typically looking um, one to two years out in the future when, when we hold those sessions. And then there are teleconferences throughout the year as needed on various technical topics and periodically on things like marketing Linux, marketing calls. We do about once a quarter. Um, okay. And that was it. So before we move on to other topics, does, do, does anybody have any questions about the programs that we offer, the ways in which we support ISVs here from the Innovation Center? If you do, this is a chance to use the chat line while Maureen is here. If you have questions later, we can always we can always uh, forward them to Maureen and then get back to you later in the week. But if you have any questions right now, just please use the chat line. Questions from class, no. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Maureen.